I wasn't going to do this. Quite honestly, I was just going to skip this style. But I just kept hearing this nagging voice in my head. Make the pale killer beer. Make the pale killer beer. Make the pale killer beer. Okay, I'll make the pale killer beer. Hi, I'm Martin Keen, and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 different beer styles. And in the course of making these beers, well, I'm making a lot of yeast starters too. And I've been taking the easy way out, which is to buy pre-canned wort, like this one from Fast Pitch. Now, this is pretty convenient, but at a couple of bucks a pop, the cost does start to add up, especially when I sometimes use two of these cans for a single yeast starter. So, I'm figuring out how to create my own canned wort. I'll show you how. So, my reluctance to brew a Keller beer. Well, it all comes down to the BJCP guidelines. You see, each beer that I've brewed has had a code assigned to it, and Keller beer has a code of 7C, but there's only one code for a Keller beer, but two types of it. Now, last week I brewed an Amber Keller beer, and I thought, well, I've done my 7C beer, I'm done, on to the next one. But I can't skip a style. So, we're gonna brew one up, and this is actually quite a simple beer to brew in terms of ingredients. For base malt, I am using nine pounds of German Pilsner malt. And actually, you could just stop there and go with that. But I'm going to also add a half pound of Carafoam. Now this will add nothing to the flavor of the beer whatsoever, but it should help improve the body and the head retention of the beer as well. So yeah, just Carafoam and German Pilsner. Mashing in at 152 Fahrenheit for an hour to get to a pre-boil gravity of 1040. They do not call this beer pale Keller beer for no reason. It has an SRM of just three. So let's talk about canning wort to use with yeast starters. Now the process I'm gonna describe here came entirely from the wonderful resource that is homebrewingnotes.com. I highly recommend you check it out, link in the description below. Now, the basic idea of this is by canning the wort, it is shelf stable, so you can keep this around for a very long time. Now, I built a batch of this a couple of days ago. Let me show you how I did it. What I've got here is I've got a bunch of mason jars. These are pint-sized mason jars. I've got some DME, we're gonna need quite a lot of DME for this, given how many mason jars I have. Then I've got some yeast nutrient, which I've actually just kind of put out into this little bowl so it's easier to get at. And then we need some water. Now, this is a bit deceiving, this says distilled water. I'm just reusing this. Actually, this is filled with tap water, which I ran through my water filter, which will hopefully remove any chlorine. Okay, so the process basically is, first of all, we're gonna add the DME into the mason jar, and we want to add four ounces of DME. Okay, so that's four ounces. Then I'm just gonna add a little sprinkling of the, the yeast nutrient, a uh, very technical measurement, a sprinkling, in that goes. And then I have this measuring jar here because I need to measure out eight fluid ounces of water and then that goes into the mason jar as well. Now it's a case of putting the lid back on and we just want to make sure it's on tight, not overly tight, and just give it a bit of a shake to mix everything up. 
and uh, now it's just a case of uh, doing this another 14 times. Everything's done, I've cleaned up my workspace. DME gets everywhere and it gets really sticky, but okay. This then is a pressure canner, and this is what I'm gonna use now to basically sanitize this stuff, because if we just left it as it is, it's gonna go bad. So this is actually pretty easy. First of all, I'm just gonna load in the mason jars into the pressure canner. Now you'll notice, by the way, that I've added some water in here. I added it to the first fill line, so there does need to be a little bit of water in the pressure canner. Just check the instructions for your system um, to see how much water you need. But yeah, it's just straight up water. I've got all my mason jars in here now, and it looks like I've got room for probably four more. I think I could have fit 20 into this, but I'll go with 16. So now it's the case of just closing this thing up and it needs to go on a heat source, so a stove. And what we're going to do is follow the 15 by 15 rule. So I'm gonna take this thing off, this weight, I'm gonna heat this up until I start seeing steam coming out of the top here. When it is coming out of the exhaust, I'll put this weight on and I'll check the pressure gauge and wait till it gets to 15 PSI. At that point, that's where I want it to be and I'll set the temperature so it stays at 15 PSI and I will leave it at 15 PSI for 15 minutes. It's the, uh, the next day now, I just uh, let the, uh, the pressure drop from this thing naturally overnight. So let's open it up and uh, see what we got. The spinach of one, this one didn't work. So that one didn't seal. Um, but if we screw off the top of one of these others, we should see that this now has a firm seal to it. Yeah, I guess this one fell down before the, uh, the canning process started, which is all the more reason to fill this thing up completely so nothing can fall over. It's definitely made a bit of a mess in there. But yeah, so basically now this is still warm. This is ready to use as a yeast starter, and uh, it is recommended that you take these tops off each one of these, just in case there is any sort of infection, and if there is any pressure buildup, then this top will just be able to just pop off if needed, but hopefully that will not be the case. So, now I'm ready to start making my yeast starters. So here it is, all finished up. Now this stuff is pretty strong. You can really consider it work concentrate at this stage and it does need to be watered down to get it to the regular gravity you'd expect for a yeast starter, which is about 1040. But doing a yeast starter now is super, super quick. So first of all, you pop the top off one of these cans and pour it into a flask. Then you top it up with some water. I use distilled water until you get to a total liquid amount of one liter. If you want to do a two liter starter, it's just a case of using two of these cans and topping up with water to get to two liters. Then add the yeast, put the flask on a stir plate, and you're done. That's it, a yeast starter created in, what, two or three minutes. I really like this process. It speeds up everything for me. It's very inexpensive. Thank you, Homebrew Notes. I'm definitely gonna keep doing this. Now, like its amber counterpart, Pale Keller beer is served very young. So we're gonna add some hops in here to give it a little bit of bitterness, and any sort of aroma and flavor hops we add in, we don't need to go overboard because we're gonna drink this while the hops are still fresh. So for the bittering hops, I have one ounce here of pearly hops, which will go in at 60 minutes. And then 15 minutes from the end, I am adding half an ounce of Halatel Mittelfrö. And this is a, a landmark day because I have now used the very last of my one pound bag of Halatel Mittelfrö. It's been a good friend. The 
gravity came in at 10.49, chilling the beer down to 50 Fahrenheit, at which point I will add the yeast from that yeast starter that I made. That's WLP 820. So, I made the Keller beer. It's three weeks later. I have Evan tasting. Welcome, Evan. Hello. I'm not going to down this. Maybe. Good. <laughs> so the deal with this beer is it is um, come out at 10.10, so it's a 5.1% beer. And yes, it is three weeks and one day old, so it's pretty young. So let's take a look, first of all, at appearance. This looks like quintessential beer to me. Like this is this is commercial beer. This is what a beer should look like if you are drawing a beer. This is the beer emoji. The beer emoji. Yeah. Well, what's surprising actually is that the beer style can be uh, quite cloudy because of it. it's so young. It hasn't had time to clarify. But actually, this is a really clear lager, which is quite surprising. All right, what about aroma? Quint not, quintessential aroma? Yeah, I'm not getting much of that. It's just, yeah, yeah it smells like beer. Yeah, the, the, this sort of beer that's potentially a little bit of floral smell to it, I am getting very little of that. I, I think I think with so much of your head as well, you wouldn't be able to smell through that either, but yeah, it's nothing to me. Yeah. Okay, well, let's try a taste. Should I, I be taking the foam off my nose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, bready, I would say, a little bit is what I'm getting from that. Um, it's a bit of a taste. It, how many hops are in this? Isn't this hoppy for me? No, it's pretty lightly hopped. Okay. Uh, but um, what you could potentially get is a little bit of sort of green apple flavour, which would say how young it is. Uh, I've had beers that taste full on of apples and they just got horribly infected. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I've ever had a green apple beer intentionally, so I don't know what that would taste yeah, like. Yeah, I'm, not, beer, I'm but... not getting that. No. It kind of tastes like a cellar to me. I know that might be wrong, but mm -hmm. that's what it kind of tastes yeah, like. Yeah, no, that's, that's probably not far from the style. Well, yeah. I think, yeah, this is a, a quick, easy beer to make. If you're in a bit of a rush and you only have a few weeks to get a beer ready, then I think a pale killer beer is uh, definitely one to consider. Good lacing. <laughs> <laughs>